Welcome to Open Source Question Burns. I am Flavi and this is Rob. Hello, guys. And we have for a special guest today, Maximilian Schwarzmüller. Welcome, Maximilian. Hi, thanks for having me here. So we'll start with uh, some questions. So the first one, cats or dogs? Yeah, that's a tough one. I, I like both, but I'll pick dogs. They're a little bit cooler, and I guess we have more variety to pick from. So a little bit my favorite. Okay, nice. Now, different kind of style. If you could travel uh, back in time to stop or remove one of the software projects that you worked on, uh, which would it be, if any? Yeah, my, my first projects, as everyone's, I guess, are, are all horrible. And if I could get go back, you could go and get rid of all of them. But on the other hand, I wouldn't be at the point of uh, where I am right now. So I'll keep them. I learned a lot, but I don't want to write them again. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. What made you start coding at 13? Uh, I always found it interesting to, to build stuff and to, to see how stuff works behind the scenes. Uh, when I was 13, the internet, the web, computers, that was all brand new for, for us, uh, I guess for everyone. And yeah, I just wanted to find out how it works. Cool. And so when you are coding and building, uh, building material, Yarn or NPM? Yarn is super awesome, much faster, but I mostly use NPM because I use it in my courses because most people still use NPM. Okay. At which age should kids start uh, learn to code? Uh, in Germany, we learn English when we enter fifth grade, and I think that's a good age to also start coding. You don't have to keep it until you leave school, but at least getting a glimpse uh, on at coding and seeing if it's your if it, if it does interest you, sounds good at this age, in my opinion. And so on the same kind of topic, you're, at least as far as I know, you're self-taught in programming, at least mostly. And so what, what's your take? What do you think of computer science degrees these days? I, I think they're useful to get jobs. I'd imagine more so in Europe, Germany. Uh, maybe in the US it's easier to, to be self-taught, to have a good GitHub repository story. Uh, and that's what I was, uh, would look for if I hire people. They should contribute to open source, have interesting projects. Uh, I don't care about degrees that much. Okay. And so still in technology, what do you prefer, Vim or Emacs? Uh, when I, I never really worked with Emacs, but to be totally honest, I also don't work a lot with Vim these days. So okay. yeah, but, but I take Vim. Well, you're obviously famous for the teaching you do, so I guess an easy one is what is the weirdest question you've heard from one of your students? There are a lot of funny questions. Um, some think that I'm basically the hotline for, for technology that, that get questions which are not linked to any course at all. Uh, one of the weirdest ones was a student asking if I could share the download links of a course uh, because he couldn't find it in the illegally acquired course he got. So, yeah, I couldn't share that. Okay. And at the moment, what do you use? TypeScript, ECMAScript, uh, Dart, or PuffyScript? Uh, I like TypeScript, but really only because of the types. Uh, for example, in Visual Studio Code, the IDE I used, he says, uh, you get types in JavaScript too, even if you don't use TypeScript. So ECMAScript is enough for me. I, I like the next gen features you can use there. Okay, and so I guess in the same theme, what so to you is the most difficult aspect of teaching, actually? Uh, it's extremely difficult to not lose the beginner's view, because as you are more and more experienced, you can lose sight about what are the pain points and what's really hard to grasp. And there, I guess, it helps that I'm self-taught, because I walk through all of that on my own, and so I hope that I get a better view of what's hard there. And on computer, these are, is it more uh, Mac OS, Linux, Open BSD, or Windows? You can choose uh, uh, two or three if you want. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I go with Mac OS. Uh, I also use Windows because I have to, but Mac OS is great for coding. Uh, just a little bit too expensive, but yeah, yeah so <laughs> it's, it's a great, great solution, just works well. Okay, well, in that case, you might already devise for the next question if you're not using okay. Linux, but who would you rather go on a weekend with? It's installment or do you install about? Well, Linux for both, uh, because it's really interesting uh, what he 
contribute and what he invented. It would be so interesting to talk with him about all these interesting things. Okay. And um, should we explore space or the oceans? That's a super interesting question. Uh, oceans are totally undiscovered, I guess, to, to a large degree. Uh, but I'm not sure if I don't ever want to find out what's down there. So maybe I'll go for space. And I watched this super awesome series on Netflix, which is called Cosmos, a Space Time Odyssey. And that's just mind blowing. So I definitely want to learn more about space. Well, we talked before about TypeScript versus ECMAScript. Um, if we move to the frameworks in the, the JavaScript environment, are you more React, Angular, or Vue? Well, what's your take on it? You don't have to be one or the other. Yeah, I love all three of them, and I work with all three of them, but Vue is my favorite, I'd say. It's super fun to learn. They have a great documentation. It combines a lot of great features from both Angular and React, and that really makes it uh, an, awesome, yeah, an awesome framework. I, I like working with it. And so, do your parents or relatives understand what you do? Yeah, some of them do. Uh, some of them don't. But the closer ones understand what I do. And some of them even take my courses. So, I'm not the weird guy at the family parties who everyone thinks is unemployed. Okay, well, in, in that same kind of line, is there something that you would not make open source or open technology? Um, from a theoretical standpoint, I think everything should be open source because everyone benefits if it's open source, except for the people who invented it if it's their business, I guess. And that would be the exception. If it's your business, if, if you have an algorithm or something which you're earning money with, which is secret, like, like Google's algorithm, stuff like that, you probably don't want to make that open source, even though in theory, it's certainly be great. Mm -hmm. okay. And to code, what kind of code editor do you use? Visual Studio Code, uh, Sublime, Atom, or uh, WebStorm? Yeah, uh, as I said, I, I nowadays use a lot of VS Code. Uh, I also still use a lot of WebStorm. WebStorm is great, but VS Code is so much faster. Uh, it's, it's developing increasingly. It, it's getting better and better. It really is getting, yeah, it's, it's almost there, very close to WebStorm. So, Maybe I'll switch to it entirely. So the next question really builds on what you've told us before about teaching and self-learning and computer science degree. So would you want to start a coding boot camp on the back of your Udemy success? Or what's your take in general on, on these camps? Um, it, is, it is something I, I've thought about, but I like the online course approach where you reach a broad audience. And I guess you can do the boot camps too, but the boot camp I'd like to do, if I were to do any, is focused on a smaller group. And then you always have to be sure of that it has to be more expensive and you're limiting the audience with that. And that is a little bit what goes against creating a boot camp for me right now. I'd like to find a solution where many people can participate. Mm -hmm. And According to you, what um, open source project is at the moment unappreciated and should get more fame and attention? Uh, I don't have a single one in mind. Uh, there are tons of smaller projects, like all these interesting validation or animation libraries you have for new React. So all these tiny projects which really make it much easier for us as developers to add that one feature we were looking for in our projects to do something easier or nicer or quicker. And there are so many of them which don't have enough contributors and are struggling to keep it up. And all these projects need more love, I guess. Sure, sure. And so let's move back a little bit. So how did you earn your first money ever? And I don't mean necessarily a salary, but how did you earn money first? Yeah, <laughs> that's really funny. Um, when I was a very small kid, I guess four or five years, uh, new neighbors moved in next to us. There was an empty space next to the house where I always played with friends, and they parked their car there, and I charged them for parking there. It was just a joke, but I actually got like 50 cents or something like that, and I was so proud. So that was my, my first money ever. Okay. And, uh, if you have a uh, weekend free, would you like to do a laser quest, paragliding, or just stay and watch a good movie? 
I'm all three straight, but I'll go for paragliding. Uh, I did parachuting and canyoning, and uh, I don't need to do the bungee jumping and base jumping, but a little bit of adrenaline isn't that bad, so I'd go for that. Okay, so if we've got a lot of adrenaline and we have a solar eruption that ends the digital age, what non-software job would you turn to? I'll probably sell sunshades, but uh, <laughs> I know seriously, I, I think I would uh, open a restaurant or something like that because I really love cooking. So that would be the plan B, but I hope it does never come true. <laughs> okay. Well, listen, thank you very much. Uh, you've answered all our questions really candidly, and that's really great. So, Maximilian, thank you very much for your time with us, and I'll hand over to, to Flavi for the closing remarks. So thank you very much, um, Maximilian. Thank you, Rob. And thank you for watching. And uh, like this video and subscribe to our Let's Put You To channel to get more of this amazing interview about open source inspiration. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs>